So ba basically, you finished step one. Any problems with step one? Everybody was able to get step one? Okay. Is it 7.47? No. No, it's not 7.47. So after you do step one, then we have to go to step two, which is, it could be the Henderson Hasselbach, is it? It's not the Henderson Hasselbach? So can I skip straight to the end of step one, or did some people get stuck before? I mean, you need me to cover getting to the end of step one? You got it? Okay. So we're going to go H2PO4 um, minus plus the NaOH, this gave us what? HPO4 2 minus. HPO4 2 minus. Na. Na plus. And H2O. And H2O liquid. Uh, technically, I should split this up. I mean, sodium hydroxide is sodium ions. I should cancel out the sodium ions huh, entirely. That will make it a little cleaner. Let's get rid of the sodium ions because they're just spectators. We'll just go to H2O liquid. Would that change the K value? Getting rid of the spectator like that? No. Yeah, it's the same. And so the initial here change final. And so at the end, how much uh, H2PO4 minus did I have left? Zero. That was the limiting region. How much hydroxide do I have left? Point six one four seven. How much HPO4 2 minus do I have? 1.166 and H2O is liquid. All right, so what we gotta figure out is what do we do? A lot of people do the NHH <coughs> equation here. They do the HH equation because they say the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of base. Well, the base is hydroxide. So they'll plug in hydroxide here and the acid now, this used to be base, right? This used to be base, but now we have a stronger base around and so instead of being this being the base, this will be the acid. acid. Do you see the role reversal there? Yeah. Or the role change? It, it's because of what you have in the mixture. And so we got a stronger base present, therefore this will be the strongest acid present, is it? Or water? Which one's stronger acid? HPO four two minus or water? HPO four minus. HPO four two minus. And so a lot of people do this on the test. What's the problem with this? <coughs> they are not conjugates, right. This, this is not a Henderson Hall. This, <coughs> for HH, and they need to be conjugates. conjugates. That's fine. We'll just plug it in. pKa is plus the log of the HPO4 2 minus and the H2PO4. So they'll do H2PO4 uh, minus over here and HPO4 2 minus here and then make this zero. Does that work? No. Uh, in fact, is this a Henderson Hasselbach buffer? No. And so we have to do step two. And step two is what? This is step one. Step two is a repeat. Strongest acid plus strongest base. So just repeat this calculation. Strongest acid plus strongest base. Actually, let me go through it since we're running short on time here. And I uh, think, what is the strongest acid present? HPO4, 2 minus. What's the strongest base present? Hydroxide. And so if these two react, what's formed? Phosphate. Phosphate and water. What's K for this? Very, very large. So initial HPO4, 2 minus is 1.166 molar. Hydroxide is 0.6147 molar. Phosphate, 0 molar. And so the change here will be complete. And so uh, what's the limiting region? Hydroxide. 
those hydroxide that one's going to go down to zero this is going to be minus 0 0.6147 which gives me what 0.5514 molar and then over here this is just plus this so it's going to be 0.6147 molar now what do we have left well it, it's always the same process we take the strongest acid plus the strongest base right present at the end what's the strongest acid what's the strongest base and so HPO4 2 minus plus PO4 3 minus is going to give us what the same thing so we can't take that any farther there and so we look do you see what we have left over we have weak acid weak base that's a conjugate pair and so this is an HH buffer but we cannot use the same exact equation as before because the acid's different the acid's changed right and so the pH for this buffer is going to equal the pKa for the new acid the new acid is going to be HPO4 2 minus which used to be the base plus the pKa I mean plus the log of the base the base is going to be the phosphate now and the acid is going to be HPO4 2 minus you see so this is a kind of an interesting problem because we knocked through one buffer and now we have the secondary buffer here pH is going to be different though for the secondary buffer but it's still the same kind of principles hold and so we can calculate pH. What is the pKa for HPO4 2 minus? 12.65. 12.65. And uh, plus the log of this gives us a pH of? 12.69. 12.69. Okay. Okay, do you see how we did that? Yeah. Now let's do one more problem quickly. All part. That was with um, that was with 30 milliliters, right? Yes. Okay, now let's go with uh, 50 milliliters. Uh, um, sodium hydroxide. So in the next example will be 50.0 mils of um, 6.00 molar NaOH into 100 mils of buffer. The same buffer as before. And so we'll have step A. Now this is going to be 150.0 milliliters. And so let's just... Uh, do this here. 150 milliliters. So the sodium hydroxide is going to have the dilution factor of 50 to 150. And the molarity is 6.00 molar, which gives me... 2.00 more. And then we'll go with the base, uh, which is HPO4 2 minus of the buffer. And the dilution factor here is going to be 100 to 150 dilution of uh, 0.517 molar. And that gives me what? 0.344. 8.6 and then we're going to have um, the phosphate oh no dihydrogen phosphate dihydrogen phosphate this is going to be a hundred yeah. over 150 of 1.00 molar which gives us okay I don't like the round here just go one third because uh, if we round, it's no longer two thirds or one third, or, you know. And so we're going to go 0 0.666 sub six molar. The reason we do that is because uh, in some titration problems, rounding it is going to um, screw up our calculation a little bit. You just keep it up under. We carry an extra ditch. All right, so now uh, we, we repeat, you know, step one. 
strongest acid plus strongest base? Strongest acid? Strongest base? I'll just, oh, you know what? I'm just going to call this hydroxide and just going to same concentration. <coughs> K is very, very large. Initial change equilibrium. So initial H2PO4 hydroxide. Oops, 2.0. HPO4, 2 minus. And so what's the limiting region? Yeah. What is it, three, 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 four? Carry extra digits. All right, then we look at what's left over. What do we have left over? Is that an A change buffer? No. no. And so we go to step two. Step two is strongest. Strongest acid. Which is which is what is the strongest acid? HPO4 two minus plus the strongest base. Hydroxide. So this went from being the base now to the acid. And the reason is because we knock out all the original acid here. Here, this is going to form phosphate plus water. K is very, very large. Initial 1.0114, hydroxide 1.3334, and zero molar. Change? Minus minus 1.0114. Yeah, no, no, no. No, it would be negative if you did that. The little rating is the uh, patient. This goes to zero, right? Yeah. This is going to come out to. 0.32179. 0.32179 molar. Yeah. And this comes out to one point. 0114 molar here. All right, now what do we have left? Some hydroxide still. Yeah. And so what we do is we take the strongest base plus the strongest acid. What's the strongest base? Hydroxide. What's the strongest acid? Water. 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 That's KB, right? Yeah. And so we do KB for hydroxide. Hydroxide plus water yields water and hydroxide. No chain. And then we look at phosphate. Do you know what phosphate is? Phosphate is what we call a tribasic base. And so there's a KB1, KB2, KB3, and KW. And so if we have a mixture of a strong base with a weak base, how many KB should we do? In other words, we're only interested in pH right now. The strong base only. Yeah. It's like when you have a mixture of a strong acid like uh, HCl and a weak acid, acetic acid, even at the same molarity, the acetic acid contributes insignificant amounts. And so basically we're done here because how much extra hy hydroxide am I going to get from phosphate? Not enough. Mm, probably not enough. Unless the KB, now KB for phosphate might be significant. This might be a situation where if the KB is big enough, we can get a little bit of extra contribution from phosphate. But it turns out uh, it's not significant. And so the P, what we can do is we assume we get negligible from phosphate, although phosphate is tough because phosphate is starting to border, be, border 
take a look at the at the border between the weak bases and the strong bases and what do you see? What do you see at the border between the weak bases and the strong bases? Bases are on the right side of the chart. At the border, what are the species at the border between the weak bases and the strong bases? Well, hydroxide. Hydroxide, strong base or weak base? Sulfide, strong base or weak base? Phosphate, strong base or weak base? Phosphate, strong base or weak base? No, phosphate is considered weak base. Phosphate's at the borderline. If you have something at the borderline, you know, at the borderline of becoming a strong base, then we might have to worry about it, right? Versus if we had something like hydroxide and carbonate, you know, hydroxide and carbonate or hydroxide and sulfite or hydroxide and bicarbonate, would we worry about that? No. no. You know, hydroxide should dominate. But phosphate being right at the border between strong bases and weak bases, we might consider it. Because if I mix two strong bases together, what happens? We just add up, right? All the hydroxide. It, it's additive. Do you guys, did you guys review those scenarios? Yeah. And so this is where we use those scenarios to come up with calculations quickly. Um, but phosphate's right on the border, so we may or may not worry about this one. You know, what is the hydroxide contribution? So why don't you do this at home? Calculate the pH just based on the hydroxide, and calculate the pH based on the additional hydroxide you get from the phosphate and see was there, even though phosphate's right at the edge of being a strong base, did it contribute much hydroxide? Additional. So do you see how we run through? It's kind of the same type of thinking through all the steps. Okay, you're going to need all that thinking for the next thing we're doing, and that is titration. Titrations is just a repeat of the calculations that we've just been doing up to now. And so it's the same, except for we have different scenarios. For example, if we titrate a strong acid with a strong base, this is the titrant. So we look at the volume. Um, in Chem 1B, we do something called a titration curve. The titration curve plots the pH versus the milliliters of titrant that we add. And so for a strong acid like HCl and a strong base like sodium hydroxide, we just do chem 1A style stoichiometry calculations. And so initially the strong acid is gonna have a pH of one, two, and then as we get closer to what's called the equivalence point, do you guys remember the definition of the equivalence point? E equivalence point just stands for equal amounts of acid and base, so we've neutralized it. We have stoichiometric quantities. And so at the equivalence point, what we should have here is salt and water. The salt here would be sodium chloride. Um, sodium chloride is neutral. And so the pH at the equivalence point should be 7.00 because we form a neutral salt. And so before the equivalence point, we have excess HCl. At the equivalence point, we neutralized everything and just have salt and water. After the equivalence point, we have excess <coughs> sodium hydroxide. And so when we have excess HCl, the pH is very low. When we have excess sodium hydroxide, the pH is very high, like 12, 13. And so what happens is there's a big jump, you know, as we get close to the equivalence point, the pH skyrockets up. These are all standard Chem 1A calculations, except for right at the equivalence point here. Right at the equivalence point, you know, we have to consider Kw as well. Because we have just tiny, tiny concentrations of excess HCl. And so Kw will be a significant contributor to hydronium. And past the equivalence point, 
just past the equivalence point, we have tiny concentrations of excess sodium hydroxide, and so Kw will be the most significant contributor to hydroxide in that solution. Does that make sense? Okay, the next thing we look at will be uh, Chem 1B style uh, calculations for the titration of a weak acid. Uh, this is a weak acid like, uh, like HAC, acetic acid, with a strong acid like sodium hydroxide. Uh, no, not a strong acid, strong base, excuse me. Strong base. Here we need uh, Chem 1B calcs. Because we've got to figure out first the pH of the weak acid. The pH of the weak acid, we need to do a Ka calculation. Right? And so if we just have acetic acid, uh, that's a Ka calculation. And then we start to neutralize it by adding sodium hydroxide, but we don't neutralize it all, so we have excess HAC. And then we neutralize it, so there's no more HAC, and we just have salt and water. The salt, in this case, would be sodium acetate and water. Sodium acetate is not a neutral salt. Sodium is neutral, but acetate is basic. And so it turns out the pH of the equivalence point is greater than 7 here. And then we have excess strong base, excess NaOH, and we have sodium acetate. If you have a strong base, sodium hydroxide, and a weak base like sodium acetate, does the weak base really contribute anything? to the pH? No. The only reason I was worried about phosphate was because phosphate is borderline strong. If you have two strong bases, then both of those bases contribute hydroxide significantly, right? But if you have one strong base and one weak base, then forget about the weak base because that's going to barely give any hydroxide because of the common ion effect. But with strong, two strong bases, do we ever worry about the common ion effect? No, because it's complete, right? They're both reactions. How late do we go till? 40. 40? Okay, I'm out of time, so I, I'm a little bit behind here. So stop here, and then we'll continue with the titration curve calculations next.